What's new this year? Is there anything that's unique about this upcoming tax season? Well, uh, 2014 really had a bunch of carryovers from 2013. So many of the things that people are accustomed to, earned income credits and child tax credits, um, you know, all of the things that are carrying forward as relates to your exemptions and your uh, deductions are very similar. Um, they inch up every year, right, in terms of exemptions and the types of deductions that we're allowed to take, like mileage and those types of things. Mm -hmm. So there isn't anything m hugely different uh, from the previous year, um, with the exception of the Affordable Care Act, right? That's a big thing that has changed. Obamacare, uh, also known as the Affordable Care Act, um, you know, is going to change some things for people that are filing for 2014 because those who signed up for health insurance had to estimate what the income was going to be and that determined what their credits were going to be from the federal government. Ultimately, uh, identifying what the amount of or the cost of the insurance was going to be. So if those estimates were off, high or low, when the taxes are prepared, Ultimately, you could be getting much more back or paying much more than what you thought. And so, two things really need to happen. One is, these taxes need to be done right. There's fees and penalties for mistakes and, and, and there's certain boxes that have to be checked and if those boxes aren't checked. Um, this is where now it becomes very difficult, I believe, for the self-preparers. Yeah, talk you know, about that. You know, yeah. people. 40%, according to uh, <coughs> Consumer Reports, do mm -hmm. their own. Yeah. Um, what do you say to those people? Well, number one, if you break down the 40%, right, there's a bunch of people who are making minimal income right. in that group. Um, and there's a bunch of people who have very simple tax returns that are W-2 earners. Uh, they don't have itemized deductions any longer, so they're taking their SAN deduction, they have their exemptions, and it's a few clicks on the turbo tax, and away you go. That's why we... Ultimately, if you looked at our pricing model, you know, we're currently at $79 to $119 in our taxes, and we did that because TurboTax is in a similar range to buy the software and do it yourself, and we're just huge believers in um, having a professional tax preparer do it, and then secondarily, one of our financial advisors looks at it again to make sure we've gotten everything. So, so with the simple folks, go ahead, do the TurboTax. You know, you don't really yeah. need it prepared. But if you've got extra deductions and you've mm -hmm. got extra problems. Yeah, any schedules, right? There's Schedule A, B, C, D, E. Any of those schedules that come into play, you should seriously consider using a tax preparer. Okay. The problem is some of the companies out there, the reason TurboTax became so popular is the price, right? If you can go out and buy TurboTax for $59 or $69 for a simple return, and that's what it costs you each year, um, why would you go to a big company and pay three or four hundred dollars? You wouldn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's where it comes into play. All right. Uh, so you mentioned health care reform, Obamacare. Mm -hmm. You're saying if <coughs> there's going to be some happy people this year and there's going to be some sad people mm -hmm. this year because maybe they over or underestimated last year. Right. Especially the self-employed people, right? Self-employeds are constantly guessing what their net income is going to be, their adjusted gross income. So. There are two sides of this. One is what happened in 2014 for those who signed up into the Obamacare through the marketplace in Michigan. The other side of it is what are we doing for 2015, right? How do we do good tax planning as we look into the future and say, what is my income going to be? What are the deductions going to be? What will the increases be uh, in terms of the health insurance itself? And how can I manage that? so that it doesn't mess up my cash flow or cause a burden at the end of the year. And so uh, there's the 2014 preparation side that we've got to make sure it's done right, and then 2015 tax planning, we just need to make sure that we've got all of those ducks in a row. Roughly how many tax returns did you do out of this office last year? Uh, roughly 400. And of those people, was there any common issue with people? Mm. Just for people in general who go to a tax <coughs> you know, planner mm -hmm. and say, here's my taxes, would you give them any advice before they came to your office? Well, we always, uh, once uh, 
someone calls in and schedules the appointment to do the tax preparation, we send them a confirmation letter and a list of things they need to bring in. Right. And, um, and then that begins the process of seeing what they have and then asking a bunch of questions. Right. Here's where the real problem is as it relates to tax preparation. Right. We are a convenient society. I call it the McDonald's Society. We drive through everywhere. And the problem with that is when your tax preparer sends you a list of things you need to bring in, it's usually a drop-off, a drive-through mentality. You've received your 1099s, your W-2s, you drop them off, <coughs> and they prepare the returns. But I can tell you, Joel, that last year we amended multiple returns mm -hmm. from previous years as a result of that where people had dropped off their information, um, never had a conversation with anybody about things like, do you have a home-based business? Have you collected all of your deductions as relates to anything medical? Or, I'll give you a perfect example. I had, <coughs> I had someone come in who was a piano instructor. She made roughly $39,000 a year teaching piano. And, that's a Schedule C, right? We're talking about schedules. That's a S Schedule C deduction or Schedule C income and Schedule C deductions. The tax repair was just from this area, found a little less than $300 in deductions. Mm -hmm. When we did the amendment, we found over 9000 mm -hmm. And it's just a conversation that people need to have. Right. So uh, what about when they schedule an appointment with you or of your, those of your ilk? Mm -hmm. um, it says here, schedule your appointment for February at the latest. <laughs> Is that about right? All of the uh, required documents that you will be receiving in the mail uh, have to be sent to you by law by the end of January. Mm -hmm. So normally we begin our appointments starting in February. As Early is better? <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> as long as you have all your documentation. You know, normally people are waiting to receive all of that and then they schedule the appointment, but we're always encouraging people, we have multiple appointments already scheduled, so um, if you want to get them done early, it's, it's wise to call earlier because the appointments fill up fast. The early dates fill up fast. Any other advice you can give to people um, to <coughs> save money? Mm -hmm. uh, it says contribute to your IRA. You mm -hmm. have until uh, April 15th, right. if you can. So that's one, and that, that advice has been around for a long time, right? You can make last minute deductions to IRAs, um, traditional and Roth IRAs, uh, but you can also make contributions if you are self-employed to SEP plans, to simple plans, and the advice normally that we give is, let's wait and see what the profit and loss is from the business to determine where we direct those funds. But there's also, uh, you know, let's really take a close look at what all the deductions you uh, could have gained or should have gained, whether it was miles or meals. Did you buy a computer? The piano instructor example, she had bought a piano, right? So guess what? A piano is deductible if you're a piano teacher. Right. So uh, I think many people just miss so many things, um, especially if there's a Schedule C or if there's a corporation. Uh, even people who are receiving W-2 wages uh, are missing things. Maybe you, maybe you made some contributions to charity. Um, maybe there were some deductions related to financial planning fees or money management fees, tax preparation fees. Those all can uh, potentially be um, deductions on your Schedule A itemized tax. So. All right, anything I missed that, I, that you'd like to add? <coughs> um, I think the biggest thing, our, our theme has always been that if we can find a dollar's worth of additional tax return to you, what is the return on investment, if you will, right? Because all you'll have is time invested. You won't have any dollars invested in that. So if I get you a dollar back for nothing, that's 100% return. So we can't just be focused on taxes. We have to do the taxes, but it has to be part of your overall financial plan and retirement plan process. That's the best 
results we can get is if we look at all of that together at the same time to get the maximum return today and in the future, right? Because guess what? Social Security gets taxed in the future, right? 85% of your Social Security can be taxed based on how much you earn. And that comes from all sources, IRA distributions, pensions, Social Security itself, interest, dividends, all those things are counting towards how much of your Social Security will be taxed. So we've got to do some planning so that it comes out better. Simple enough. All right, Rick, thank you. Thank you.